Welcome back, another episode. Episode 8 of Accused is no different. The desperate state of a family that lost a kid in a school shooting is depicted in Laura's tale. Laura uses her public platform to advocate against assault weapons as a way to express her rage. This makes sense because her character, a philosophy professor, needs punishment to put things right. In the aftermath, she disregards her remaining son's mental health, which is customary for the accused. Every episode of this show has a strong undercurrent of untreated sadness, anger, and unfavorable mental trauma, and the results are frequently disastrous. A sophisticated character who appeared to believe her delusions was represented by Margaret Martindale. Rarely are individuals like these aware of or held responsible for the negative ripple effects of their anger and hatred. If it weren't for the literal hordes of QAnon and conspiracy theorists that encourage and assist this kind of crazy conduct every day, her character's actions would have been laughable. The fact that unrelated citizens may interrogate and converse with one another in this manner infuriated me. Martindale embraced the part and portrayed Joanna Pierce with the same level of vileness and conviction. Her capacity to deteriorate into such a vile monster is astounding, and her persona is really unsettling. They are the people who don't pay attention. They are hazardous because they either believe or say what they want other people to believe. In this instance, Joanna's crusade seriously endangered Laura's family. Conspiracy theorists became deeply interested in the family as a result of their search for the truth, which sparked an aggressively intrusive hunt. It was emotionally draining to observe Laura's narrow focus. There was a power disparity in the home as she dictated the family's reactions, proving her husband Eric right when he claimed she was looking for a conflict. She received the majority of the blame because she was in charge of the situation. Laura's wrath felt legitimate, and she persisted in fighting even as their community and loved ones became distant. The helplessness she had after losing her child in such a dramatic and devastating way can only be imagined. She therefore clung to what little control she believed she had. She clearly loved her kids, but she didn't notice Jonah until it was too late. Again, nobody took into account how he felt as a result of seeing her lose control, so he had to watch it happen. Jonah felt the strain of his situation. He appeared to be at a loss for words due to his anguish over losing his only blood relative, even without the conspiracy theorists. Because Liam was his younger brother, he might have felt compelled to defend him. That feeling of failure might have troubled him. Then Joanna and her team started their campaign to disprove the existence of his sibling. Liam was further eliminated by their slander campaign. And in some strange way, murdering Joanna was like taking revenge for his brother's passing. His mentality was hard to define or comprehend. The fact that Laura accepted responsibility removed both his responsibility for the crime and his chance to seek help for the uncontrollable wrath he was feeling. Laura accepted a request as a last-ditch effort to keep her child safe, and it was sad. We don't know whether the cycle of violence and crime has ended. Joanna deserved to live, even if she was harsh and exercised her right to free speech. And even when Joanna was no longer in charge, another radicalized leader would always step in to lead. We don't typically think about the antagonist's point of view but the idea of this show invites us to do so. So why was Joanna so determined in her attempts to malign the family? Do these folks believe that their liberties are being violated? There is a perspective where Joanna is the victim fighting for her rights because she seemed honest in her care for Jonah when she discovered him in her closet. And for some viewers of this program, that will be the only thing they see. By providing us a peek into the minds of the accused and what drove them to do the crime, accused represents the perspectives of those who are frequently persecuted and ignored. Most of the time, an offense is committed in response to a real or imagined threat or untreated mental illness. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe our channel.